That really is me on a trapeze last summer. I took one trapeze lesson, and I can tell you from experience, one was definitely enough. <laughs> when you're up on the platform, and there's a dude, Hank, you've got a harness, so you're not gonna die. And there's a net below you, so you're not gonna die. And there's a dude behind you in a superhero cape, holding on to the back of the belt of the harness, and he's saying, just reach forward and leap. Trust me, it'll be fun. And at that moment, you look down, and you see that it's like, 25, 35 feet down into the net. So I'm leaning forward, I'm leaning forward, and I'm reaching out for the, reaching out for the bar. He's like, do it now, let go. I'm like, I can't. He's like, I've got you. I know what you're gonna let go. And then he finally said, I'm letting go whether or not you reach for that bar. That was a little tough love right there. But it was all right, and I finally reached out for the bar, and it was kind of fun and swung back a couple times, and then he said, let go and fall. He said, there's a net that'll catch you, and I finally let go and I fell. So the journey of arriving at that point, of being able to reach out, grab a hold of the bar, and then let go, started a long time ago. This is a personal journey for me. So going back, way back when I was born, I was three pounds when I was born, even though I was full term. And they couldn't really explain what happened, and the only thing that they could say was somehow I was starved in utero. Growing up as a child, I was always given attention for how tiny I was. And, and I, the first memories I have are of everyone in the family talking about how she was so small, her head fit in the palm of our hand, and her feet didn't even touch my elbow. And oh, Kristen, you were so tiny, we dressed you in doll clothing. Oh, you were so small that when you were five, you were wearing a toddler's two. Oh, yes, and then when you were in junior high school, we, we, you, did, you couldn't fit into the juniors. You were too tiny. The pants would just fall off of you. So all of this attention, and that's not what causes an eating disorder. There's many different factors that go into it, certainly about control and feeling, feeling in control of something and sort of there could be some power issues to it. But my identity was really, I wrapped up my identity and how small I was. And when puberty hit, when I was about 14, oh my goodness gracious, that was like a nightmare for me. And um, my, my height, always, I was always the smallest kid in the class, the shortest kid, and then I worked to be the tiniest kid, which was somewhat ironic because I did a lot of theater, so there you are on a stage where you're supposed to be larger than life, and I was getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and then I came to Kutztown. And although it was a fantastic experience, I was in just about every show when I was here and I loved it, my eating disorder was out of control. And I was doing aerobics twice a day, and then I was running five miles a day. Every night before I went to bed, I had to do a thousand crunches before I would allow myself to go to sleep. So I found a food diary from that time, and I was eating things like a half of a peach, two bites of a bagel, and then maybe a small dish of ice cream in the evening, and that was it. I, reached back and I kind of hugged that person for who she was at the time. She was doing the best she could, but was really not doing very well in that area of life. And through, through a journey of finding therapy, finally admitted that I had a problem, that was big, and then through surrounding myself with some really positive people, and I, I was married, he was 100% Italian, that's where my last name, Pedamonte, comes from. And his family, when we'd go and have celebrations at his family, I saw people really loving food, like loving it, and, and it was a wonderful experience cooking together, and it helped start to reframe things for me. And became slowly but surely healthier and healthier in my eating habits from a lot of work on myself and being really fortunate to be surrounded and, and choosing to surround myself with people who are also healthy. And I can tell you that now, most days, um, I can go have a regular meal and, and not run and I don't feel like I have to go to the gym right away or run five miles. Which, for anyone who's ever been on the journey, you know that that's a, that's a, big, um, a big change in one's life and something to be really, really, I'm so grateful every day. And now it's become all about really looking at and being so grateful and joyful for all the things my body can do and our bodies can do. It's incredible what our bodies do for us every day. We don't think about it. It's truly a miracle. Our bodies are a miracle, and I don't think we thank them often enough. And I thank my body all the time that it supported me through all the abuse that I gave it over all those years. And, and I'm standing here in front of you.
And I wanted to share that backstory because sometimes people ask, well, you know, who are you to talk about body image? Or why is it so important to you? What's your passion? It's a really personal passion. I have come through the other side. I still have tough days. Maybe suit shopping. They should just put fun mirrors in the dressing room. They should put fun house mirrors so you look fabulous no matter what you're putting on. I think that would, you know what, let's start that. Who's in with me? I think oh, yeah. we should do a prank. Oh my gosh, I found some accomplices already. This is excellent. I think we should sneak into a dressing room at some like high-end department store and put fun house mirrors in the dressing rooms. I think it would be great. So yeah, some days are still kind of tough, but most days are a lot better. And I don't have that impulse to go and do a thousand punches or to run to the gym. I can enjoy, enjoy the meal, enjoy eating, and enjoy exercising rather than it being, you know, you doing aerobics twice a day, running five miles a day, you know how much time that takes? That's a lot of time that I, I can spend that on Netflix now. You know, or I can spend it going out having a beverage with a group of friends. We are going to play.